ago, I asked my two-year-old daughter, Rayleigh, to pass me a red ball, this red ball. And I found myself wondering, does it look the same to me as it does to her? And I wonder what this ball looks like to my cat over there on the sofa. And I'm really interested in the perception of color. I'm fascinated by it. Perhaps you've had a similar experience, especially the 2% of men in the audience tonight who have red-green color blindness. All right. <laughs> Well, I study the monkeys in Costa Rica, and I'm interested in how these monkeys use color to do the important things in their life, like find juicy red berries or avoid big, fuzzy yellow jaguars. And the way that I answer this is by investigating the three different components of color. So the first component is hue, and that's the physical property of an object. What wavelengths are bouncing off of its surface? Now, this ball is bouncing off longer wavelengths that to most of us appear to be red. The second component of color is the visual system of the viewer. The monkeys I study in Costa Rica have one of six different kinds of color vision, including some monkeys who are red-green colorblind, and each color vision type sees the world in a slightly different way. It's amazing. The third component of color is the ambient light the wavelengths of, bright, of light that are actually reaching the object that you're looking at. So unfortunately, while I can't give you all a different type of color vision, I'd like you to sit back in your seats, pretend that you're a little monkey, and you're running around in the light of a tropical forest, which is predominantly green. And this is because as the light filters in through the dense foliage of the canopy, the leaves are absorbing the greens, the, the leaves are reflecting the greens while absorbing the reds and the blues. And this is it, this is the light that those monkeys are looking for their red juicy berries and running away from their jaguars and it's a bit different. Okay, let's go back to our comfort zone, white light please. <laughs> now these artificial lights and our own human perception have biased our understanding of color and nature in the past. But I'm really excited to tell you, now we can go out, we've got the tools, we have the technology, we can measure the hue of objects in the rainforest. We can characterize the ambient light. We're even starting to be able to simulate the different color visions. So when you think about that, we can really start to see the world that animals can see. Now the applications of that for understanding the evolution of color and uh, ecology and animals, I could go on about for days, but have a personal reason to be interested in this. Like monkeys, humans have variable color vision. My husband sees colors differently than I do. And our daughter has color vision genes from each of us. She sees the world in a way that's totally different from either one of us. And using some of the techniques integrated that I've been talking about, I hope that one day I can see the world through her eyes. Thank you. This is really interesting to me because I, when you start talking about how other beings see things, and you said that the monkeys, some of them, a certain percentage of them are also colorblind. Mm -hmm. How do you know? because they can't tell you. So how do you know that they are? That's a, yeah, I wish they could tell me. It would be a lot easier. No, what I do is I go around and I pick up monkey poop, and I'm able to isolate DNA from the feces, from the cells that are sloughed off. And in the lab, we can sequence the genes, and it's just three amino acids that are different between one type of color vision and another type of color vision. So we just look at those amino acids, and we can predict what types of color vision they can see. From their poop, yeah. You'll hear more about that. <laughs> wow, that was really interesting. I have to say, when the lights turn green and we're trying to visualize what it's like to see through a rainforest, I was thinking about the movie Predator, because that's <laughs> like the dumb way that I look at the world. But like, why, from an evolutionary perspective, why don't we have more creatures who have predator vision if that's you know so important to win against uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Jesse Ventura and all that? Well, I have to tell you that I'm actually completely unable to watch horror movies, so I've never actually seen Predator. <laughs> but I think that I'm aware of the type of vision that Predator has, and there's no way our biological systems on Earth yet can, can handle that. 
just to follow on from that, if is there a reason? Well, from Predator, no. Um, are there animals who have developed things like infrared vision or ultraviolet type vision? I mean, I know bees, you know, you hear about insects, and, but I'm thinking of higher order, you know, mammals and that kind of thing. Are there examples of that? Because yeah. Of that? Um, well, birds have ultraviolet vision, actually. And so, you know, thinking about looking up at the blue sky, when a bird's flying around, they're thinking, oh, it's ultraviolet -y today. <laughs> you know, it's not blue. And, and actually, what's interesting, though, when you think about vision, it's not just getting more color vision is always better. Uh, colorblind monkeys and even people who are colorblind have an increased ability to break camouflage. And we find that the monkeys are capturing more camouflaged bugs and that people in the military who are camouflaged perform especially well as snipers. And so it's not always that more color vision is better. Thank you. Thanks.